This is problem set number five, where we're going to talk about atomic mass and do some more work with the periodic table. This first question asks, tells us that naturally occurring sulfur uh, consists of four isotopes, so four different masses of sulfur. Um, and then they give us the mass of each isotope, and then they give us the percent, meaning out of all the sulfur in the world, how much is this mass? They ask us to use this information to calculate the average atomic mass of the sulfur. I'm going to do that here because I didn't leave myself enough room. So let me get rid of Okay, so the way we're going to do this, we're going to um, uh, calculate a weighted average. Okay, so that means we're going to take each mass and multiply it by its percent. So this, that's what I'm going to be doing here. All right, there we go. So I'm going to calculate all of these. Now, after this, we're going to add up all the numbers that we get. And so um, after this multiplication, we're going to cut off significant figures. So this number has four, this number has six, so my answer can only have four. So I'm going to get 30.39. Is that right? Let's see. Nine, seven, two, one. Yep. Okay, the second one, 32.9715 times one, six, six, seven. That's going to give me, um, I can have two significant figures, so 0 0.25. I'll try and line those up better. 33.9679 times 0 0.042. This can have three significant figures, so 1.43. And then uh, 35. 9671 times 0 0.0001. This is only allowed to have one significant figure, so that's going to be 0 0.004. Okay, now for this weighted average, I'm going to add up all those numbers that I got. So 30.39 plus 0.25 plus 1.43 plus 0 0.0. Um, Zero four. And what I get is 32.074. Now adding these, I need to check my significant figures at the end. So I go to the second decimal place there, second, second, third, which means my answer can only go to the second. So my final answer um, is actually going to be 32.07. Um, oh AMU. if I did that correctly. Okay, so that's the answer number one. All right, number two, calculate the average atomic, or the atomic weight of nickel to the correct number of significant figures using the following data. So we're gonna do the exact same thing here again. So I'll just fly through it pretty quickly. Um, I'm not gonna write all of these um, numbers because I know that my answer can only have five significant figures, so I'm just gonna cut them off a little bit. Oh, and I want enough space. I'm going to do it here.
Twitter. We can have five sig figs. This one can have five sig figs. Sick figs. <sighs> this one can only have four sick figs. And the last one. This one can only have four sig figs. Now I add all these up. And I get my final answer that is 50. Eight point six nine two two five. But here's third decimal, third decimal, fifth, third, fourth. So my answer can only go to the third. So that means fifty-eight point six nine two AMU would be the average atomic mass of that nickel. And just out of just out of curiosity, we go to nickel fifty-eight point six nine three. Yep. So. It's actually correct. All right, number two, naturally occurring magnesium um, has three stable isotopes, 24, 25, 26. This means that there are three forms of magnesium atoms, each with a unique atomic weight. This appears to be contrary to the idea that atomic weight is the defining property of an element. Explain in three sentences or less why all three of these types of um, atoms are indeed the same element. Well. The idea that atomic weight is the defining property of an element is just not true. What is the defining property? Protons. Protons define an element. Therefore, uh, I don't care necessarily what the weight is. So how is this weight changing? Well, it's changing because the number of neutrons is changing. But all three of these magnesium are going to have the same number of protons. And how many is it? Um, 12 protons. And so this then has 12 neutrons, 13 neutrons, 14 neutrons. All right, B, chemical analysis conducted by the first Mars rover robot. Robotic vehicle on its 1997 mission produced a magnesium isotope data shown in the data below. Sorry, in the table below. Is the average atomic mass of magnesium in this Martian sample the same as on Earth? Use the correct number of significant figures. So we're just going to calculate the average atomic mass here and compare it to the one on Earth and see if magnesium is occurs in different um, mass ratios on Mars than on Earth. So we're going to have 23.9850 times 0 Zero. This can have four sig figs, so one eight point eight eight. Two 
gives me an average atomic mass of 24.2 second decimals as far as I can go. So 31 AMU, which is pretty darn close to 28 to 24.305. Um, but I'm going to say a bit heavier. But we're not actually sure because to four significant figures, this is 24.31. So. Uh, but they're pretty close. Okay, um, these are falling elements. The falling elements all have two stable isotopes. Which isotope in each of the falling pairs of stable isotopes is more abundant? Explain how you know. Um, so we did something similar to this on problem set number four. But basically, what we're doing here is we know that the weighted a the the weighted average means that. Um, more abundant isotopes will pull the average mass closer to that to their mass. So basically what I'm doing here is I'm going to look B10 or B11 will boron has an average atomic mass of 10.81. That's closer to B11. So I'm going to select boron 11. Lithium average mass is 6.94. That is closer to 7 than it is to 6. Neon sorry, not neon, nitrogen is 14.07, so it's definitely closer to 14. Neon is 20.1, so that's closer to 20. And chlorine is 13.45, which is definitely closer to, sorry, 35.45, which is closer to 35 than it is to 37. All right. Which of the highlighted elements below form monatomic ions with the charge of plus one, plus two, plus three, minus one, and minus two. This is an interesting question because this isn't anything we've talked about yet in the semester. We're going to talk about it a lot later. Um, but the general idea is that elements, if they're going to form ions, tend to gain or lose electrons in order to um, have the same number of electrons as the nearest noble gas. So what that means is that um, this atom right here, if it loses one electron, will have the same number of electrons as this noble gas. And if it loses one, it will have a plus one, which means this is most likely to form a plus one. For a similar reason, this is most likely to form a plus two. This is most likely to form a plus three. You can see that pretty well. Um, and over here, if this atom gains one electron, it will have electrons like a noble gas. So this is most likely to be a minus one if it gains one electron. And this is most likely to be a minus two. This one in the middle, um, there isn't a, uh, a real reason that you should know at this point in the class, but I guess this atom often forms a plus one. Don't worry too much if you don't understand that at this point because we'll talk about it a lot later and you're not really expected to know it right now. Just kind of look forward. And then describe how the charge of the monatomic ions that elements form change as the group number increases in a particular row of the periodic table and how ion charges change as the row increases in a particular group. Well, um, a group is a column and a row obviously is a row. Okay, well, what does it look like happens as we go across, down a row? As we go down a row, um, the uh, the charges of the ions that are going to form increase. So increase across row. And that could be true like um, this is this would be like a negative 3 in this row. So negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, those are increasing numbers, right? And 1 plus 2 plus 3, those are increasing numbers as well. So the number increase across the row. And then uh, in a group, as you go as you go down a group, um, they stay constant. Now they gain or lose electrons to have electrons similar to 
different noble gases as you go down the column. But in one column, um, the number of electrons they would need to lose or gain to be like a noble gas is the same. That's also looking a little bit forward in the class. But there you have it. That is problem set number five.